Hi hey everyone, Eugene here, back again, this time with another video, uh, 12 days of Guerlain. Even though the VIP event was last night, it's over, the festivities are done with. Uh, I'm just going to keep calling these or, or, or numbering them 12 days of Guerlain. I think this is day 6 now. I can't even keep track anymore, it's just so many Guerlain videos. I've been getting comments uh, on my channel saying, you know, are the, is Guerlain over with yet? But no, it's not. Um, they'll be over when I decide that they're over. But um, the event was last night. I went down with Christo. We did a live stream on his channel. Um, it was almost an hour long. We just got kind of got carried away. We had so much fun doing it. It was the first time for both of us. And then we kind of had to break stream. Um, to find parking, we went into an underground garage, and then we started upstream again as we were walking towards the boutique, and we just kind of showed um, what the downtown Toronto area is like um, around the boutique and uh, and that sort of thing. We showed the Hermes boutique and uh, Holt Renfrew and you know whatever you can find on Bloor Street, which is a really glitzy, um, affluent area great for shopping and that sort of thing but um, my wife originally wanted to come she was really uh, she was really pumped for this the whole 12 days of Guerlain thing was her idea she's in um, marketing like social media marketing she helps people start up their business uh, and that sort of thing so she really pushed this she's like you got to do it you got to do it she was so excited she she kind of like came up with this whole presentation um, yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm not really that inspired to do, um, you know, more work than I have to. And uh, I just kind of followed her lead. But, uh, I, I mean, in saying all this, I should I should tell you guys, because I've never really mentioned, everything that you see here, all the perfumes from Guerlain, that you see in my videos have are fully paid for uh, out of my own pocket. Nothing has been sponsored. Um, or given to me, so none of, there's none of that thing going on. I just want to make that very clear. Uh, I'm not into YouTube uh, making fragrance reviews to make any kind of money because uh, that's just not what I do. I'm, I'm just making videos out of passion and uh, it's just something that I love. So um, the event was great. They had, uh, they had champagne. I didn't drink, I just had a bunch of water. I think Crystal was getting all up into the champagne. Um, they had snacks, hors d'oeuvres and, and sushi, like this really fancy sushi um, with peppercorns and, and zucchini and, and cucumber wrapped up in God only knows what, but it was quite fancy to say. Um, seeing a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while, um, some old friends that I met years ago. It was nice to catch up with them. I met some new people that I've only really chatted with online. Uh, it was nice to meet them. And um, they had a, a wonderful presentation. The boutique had a, a great presentation. Um, just kind of uh, showing older, not older, but exclusive pieces, really big Baccarat crystal, Shalimar bottles, uh, 100 year anniversary Lure Blue collection. There's a four piece Lure Blue, uh, beautiful collection. And um, the presentation just kind of went into the history of Guerlain, um, how it started, uh, um, went through all the perfumers, um, the famous perfumes, uh, Shalimar, Mitsuko, Jiki, that sort of thing. And then, um, you know, Habit Rouge, Samsara, and just kind of how one perfume led to another. So it was really nice, you know, I've kind of heard all this stuff before, but it was nice to hear it again. And after the presentation, we just kind of all mingled. We smelled a lot of new perfumes. I mean, they weren't really new for me. I've smelled them all before, and if I haven't, I probably own them all, but, um, but it was nice listening to other people just uh, smelling new perfumes for them for the first time. Um, so yeah, it was a great time. Um, I think they're gonna have another VIP event in December sometime, somebody mentioned it, but I didn't really take notes. It just kind of went over my head. My um, my uh, anxiety really wouldn't let me focus. So um, they asked me to speak at the boutique and I just kind of like, mm, how about I just stand here and watch other people talk? You know, I'm not really a social person. I'm not really into 
um, big crowds or speaking in public. I mean, this for me is hard enough, um, let alone to speak in public. So I just kind of said, you know what, I'll stand at the front. I'll say thank you for coming. And, and that was about it. I let um, everyone else really take over. But uh, at the same time, I, I really did enjoy myself. So that's that. I did pick some things up I'm going to share with you here. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about, there, well, there was actually a bunch of things I wanted to talk about. When I got up this morning, I kind of went through my emails and uh, I got a really interesting comment on a video that I posted, you know, it could have been three or four videos ago saying, um, I'm actually going to look this up because I want to code it word for word. Um, it, it kind of annoyed me, but you know what, I'm not going to delete it. Um, I actually, it's an actually a, a, a challenging comment, which I do appreciate, you know, I, I do, um, I welcome all comments, you know, if they're positive or negative, um, you know, as long as they're not personal attacks on me or anyone I know or my friends or whatever, I welcome them and I won't, I won't delete them. I think in four years of YouTube, I've only deleted, you know, less than a handful of comments. So I'm not going to mention the person's name, but the comment goes something like this. Guerlain equals top blending craftsmanship. Okay. Then it says Guerlain equals overrated and overpriced scents. This guy, meaning me, is a huge Guerlain fan and is fully addicted to this house but it does not mean the actual smell is wearable, pleasing, or simply nice. And I'm thinking, I actually responded and I said, which of these fragrances do you find unwearable from Guerlain? And better yet, which brand presents better craftsmanship than Guerlain? Simple question, right? To me, the whole reason my obsession with this brand is is actually the wearability. Um, they wear very nicely on me. They develop very nicely. The quality is there. Um, it goes beyond and above any other fragrance brand in terms of quality, uh, craftsmanship. It's just very precise. It's consistent. Well, you know, in the last 20 years or so of this brand, I can't say um, their scents have been very unique. Um, they're kind of leaning more towards the mainstream, but that still doesn't deter from the quality and the craftsmanship that they use into putting uh, into their fragrances. So, so he actually did respond to um, my question asking, which uh, fragrances, which fragrance brand uh, is, has better craftsmanship than Guerlain? And his response was, he was actually saying Guerlain does have very good blending and quality, uh, comparable to Frederick Moll, Profuma Roma, Creed, L'Artisan, and surprisingly, Byredo. All 10 out of 10 for those. And he gave, Andy Tower, an 11 out of 10. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue Andy Tower. He's an indie, solo, independent perfumer. I like Andy Tower. I've got nothing negative to say. Um, sure, 11 out of 10. Okay, I'll give you that. Frederick Mall, great. Profumo Roma, I'm not very, um, I've never smelt a single Roma, so I can't comment on that. Creed. I don't dislike Creed. I am not a fanboy by any chance. I own two, three, maybe three tops Creeds. I can't even remember it right now. Um, the three that I own, I probably haven't worn any of them in two years. They just not a brand that interests me much. Uh, I find them very fresh. Um, not a lot of depth to their fragrances. Um, I do think they're well put together. They've got quality uh, behind their name but um, they just don't interest me much, okay? And then, you know, the surprise to me was Byredo. I'll give them all those, you know, I can see, um, 
Lardizan. Uh, I don't own a single Lardizan, nor do I care to, but I'm not gonna argue. Sure, fair enough, they've got you know a traditional perfume house, um, kind of in the style of Diptyque, and even Chanel and Guerlain and Dior, so I kind of admire Lardizan, even though I don't own a single one. But he goes on to mention Byredo and how um, I think there's, there's actually a third comment saying how Balda Freak and um, Baudelaire, Oud Immortel are all 10 out of 10 fragrances. Now, just because I only talk about Guerlain on my channel doesn't mean I don't own fragrances from other brands, which I do. And um, I mean, if they inspired me, I would talk about them. And I usually take a fragrance review without the bottle, okay, when I'm, I'm seeing a review on just a sample with a grain of salt. I always put more stock into a review when the reviewer has the actual bottle. I don't know why, I just kind of see an investment put into the fragrance. Uh, somebody's taken the time to purchase it, to wear it, to get to know it. I, I can tell you honestly, from my experience with this house, they um, have nothing to do with Guerlain. They are completely out of Guerlain's league. This is, uh, if I walk into a Saks or a Holt Renfrew, wherever they carry this, this is a third rate perfume house. Um, by third rate, I mean like first rate, I put Chanel, Dior, Guerlain, Hermes, maybe Diptyque. Second rate, I would go, you know, in the second level below them, maybe Tom Ford, MFK, um, Killian, maybe. Third rate, I'd say Memo, Le Labo, Byredo, um, and that sort of thing. I did a video about a month ago, it was with Christo, we kind of collabed together. If you go back to Christo's review of Queer Canage, it was on the exact same day. And for whatever reason, the uh, video didn't save to my camera. Maybe I didn't press the record button, but the just I just could never find the video. And the video was my first uh, episode of Hype Train Derailment. And I always wanted to do, you know, like a Hype Busters style, but Crystal had already branded Hype Busters. I didn't want to take that from him. I just kind of wanted my own. And it was Hype Train Derailment. And I wanted really, what I really wanted to do was derail the ever so popular Balda Afrique. Every reviewer on YouTube um, loves this stuff off. And I can kind of see why, but I have to, I, I mean, give my own opinion and say I, I totally disagree with whatever has been stated about um, how great this fragrance is, how well the blending is, how well the craftsmanship is because I just don't see it. To me this is a synthetic piece of junk. Um, when I smell this all I smell is uh, synthetic fruit mixed with green dry wood notes, um, cheap smelling florals, very bad transitions. Um, it's not smooth at all. The, this thing transitions like a flight of stairs. It's got no, um, no uniformity to it. It's got no curve. It's all sharp corners. Um, the best thing about this though, to me, is actually the biggest complaint everybody else had was the performance. I get excellent performance from this. Um, in fact, I think the first three hours are rather loud and obnoxious and cloying on me and I can't wait for the dry down where this um, settles nice and smoothly, which is actually the best part of this fragrance is the dry down. Um, and I kind of, it smells like pickles to me. So, I mean, to kind of compare Byredo, which has been in existence for 10 or 15 years to, um, a brand that's pretty much um, been in perfumery for as long as perfume has been uh, existing is a joke. Um, Baudelaire 
booting or towel. Bald Africa, they all kind of have the same base. There's nothing new um, to any of these. Once you get into the dry down, they all kind of smell the same. Nothing changes. I've said publicly before, I can't remember where it is, but one of the worst fragrances I've ever smelled in my life comes from this house by Rado, and it's M. Mink, and this is absolutely vile and disgusting. To me, it's all synthetic. Um, when I smell it, this reminds me of mashed, boiled eggs mixed with blood that's been stored in the fridge. Um, it, it reminds me of suicide, just like somebody had slit their wrists and all the blood had poured into a bowl, took some boiled eggs, mashed them up, threw them in the fridge for a couple hours till they cooled off, and that's what I smell. It's horrible, it's vile, and it's disgusting. Um, I get synthetics in all of these, and they're not quality synthetics. And there's nothing wrong with synthetics, but when you can pick up every, um, every different note, you know, it's not a good thing, because they do come off quite cheap to me. And not only that, but at retail, they're retailing at the same price as Guerlain's, which are produced by a master perfumer, which also source their own materials, and they source their own, um, they, they have their own farms and plantations, which I don't think Byredo does. They probably hire some perfumer from Fermanek or Givaudin, I don't even know how to pronounce Givaudin, and uh, you know, they pay somebody to produce their perfumes for them. Now, let's take the last 20 years of Guerlain, and if he had said, the last 20 years of Guerlain are all shit, and they're crap, and they're unwearable, I would have said, sure, okay, I would agree with you, because they are. Everything post Louis Vuitton, Moe, Hennessy, once they've purchased Guerlain, they're crap. They're mainstream, they're easy to wear, there's nothing challenging about them, they're not a whole lot complex, but, I gotta give them that they're really well made. Um, even something as mainstream and, and uh, easily accessible as Le Petit Robe Noir, which you can find in pretty much every single drugstore across the country, is, okay, it's mainstream, but is better, uh, there's more craftsmanship and quality in this mass-produced perfume than any Byredo you can find. And, <laughs> I'll argue that till, you know, the end of time. You can't convince me that a Byredo is better produced than any Guerlain. So, you, you take the last 20 years and you wipe them out and you say they're all shit, and I'm gonna agree with you. Now, if you were to take, let's say, the top five or top 10 uh, fragrance reviewers in the world, and I'm not talking YouTube reviewers that live in their parents' basement, I'm talking people that get paid to review fragrances, um, you know, for magazines, for newspapers, and you were to ask or, or make a poll saying, list the top 20 fragrances of all time. And if they were to put 10 Guerlain fragrances on there, nobody, could, nobody would say anything. Nobody would say, oh, no, that doesn't make any sense. You can't have 10 Guerlain, because you could easily have 10 Guerlains and um, <laughs> you, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You can have Jiki. You can have Mitsuko, you can have Shalimar, you can have Lure Bleu, you can have Shamad and Nahima and Habit Rouge and Samsara and um, God only knows how many more. How many Byredos can you have on the top 20 list of all time? If you were to put a single one, you know, you'd be a laughing stock, you would be a joke, nobody would take you serious. Um, and. <laughs> You know, to say that Guerlain's are unwearable is, it's, it's, it's fuckery too, because they've been in existence for 160 years. To be in existence for 160 years, first of all, people need to buy your perfume. And if they're buying your perfume, they're wearing your perfume. So, I just don't get it. I mean, maybe the the author of these comments is from a different um, age category for me, uh, a different age bracket. He could be a lot younger. I just find a lot of these Byredos are, uh, how would I say, maybe like a frat boy, frat house. That's, I, 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 I would think of 
like I associate them with a frat house, you know, college parties, frat house, um, hipsters, that kind of thing. I'm at the age, it, it, age even has nothing to do with it, age, age social status, um, job, education has nothing to do with class. You either have class or you don't. I'm not saying I'm a classy guy, I have a dirty job, I'm a tool and die maker, I have dirty hands, I, I come home, I have grease, I have dirt, I have filth under my nails, that's just the, um, the type of job that I'm in. But I know, you know, at the end of the day, um, I go to work, I'm dressed in jeans and a hoodie, just like this, I came home from work. But on the weekends when I go out with my wife, I'm going out to dinner, I'm going out to a play, I'm not going to wear jeans and a hoodie, I'm going to get dressed up in a uh, nice pants, a jacket, a nice shirt, uh, maybe a pocket square, that sort of thing. And um, I, I kind of uh, relate fragrance to that as well. If you're going to get dressed up, you know, in the jeans and the jacket and the nice shirt, you're going to wear a nice fragrance to go with it. You're not going to go out to a play in, in sweatpants and, and joggers the same way you're not going to wear a biredo. Like, you're going to wear something that's classy and sophisticated, like a Mitsuko. And to wear anything less, to me, is unacceptable. I always want to wear what I feel the most comfortable in, and that's usually Guerlain. Now, just because I'm always talking about Guerlain on my channel, doesn't mean, like for me, it's perfume first, and then Guerlain, and then Chanel, and then Dior, and then Hermes. It's not Guerlain first, and then everything else. No, I'm coming to you from, I'm a perfume fan. So, I say I love perfume, but then I love Guerlain. Then I love Dior. So, That's just the way it is. I'm, <laughs> I'm just coming to you. Like, I'm not pushing Guerlain on anybody. I'm just sharing my thoughts and my opinions. Um, I, I welcome your comments and I, I welcome your challenges. And, uh, you know, that's all I really wanted to say. But to tell me that by Rado, is better or just as good. Like I said, you know what? You take the last 20 years of Guerlain and, 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 and they're all crap and they're shit and they're garbage and I agree with you. Sure, they are. But then you take something that Louis Vuitton has created, which is the Arts and Materials line, which is in the same price bracket as this and you cannot compare the two. This is one of the greatest perfume collections in the perfume world. Um, I always said the Hermescence line um, the Chanel exclusives and the Guerlain exclusive, those are the three best perfume lines in all of perfume. Um, I don't care, you know, you can't tell me by Rado, uh, Le Labo, um, Killian, Tom Ford, can't even touch those. They're, they just doesn't make any sense to me. They're, I just look at those perfumes, I see obnoxious, um, <coughs> excuse me, I, I just, I, I don't buy it. Anyway, um, I'm starting to get uh, quite flustered here. <laughs> I'm going to cut this short and um, I was going to do an unboxing but I'll save it for another video. Uh, I just want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you again.